You're more nervous than I am. <laughs> I think they hear us right now, by the way. <laughs> All right, I better walk over here. Uh, hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Have good morning, good evening, good night. I know it's all different times of, the wor times of day all over the world. Look, there are Legos here today. This is super exciting. I'm tempted to just go and play with these Legos right now, but I have to pay attention to you, the viewer, and talk about what's going to happen on today's uh, coding train episode perfunct uh, required what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> train whistle uh thing all right so um i'm very excited today there's a special uh live stream for today this friday with a guest uh kind of rapidly put together at the last minute uh i will be back next week with continuing my word to vec tutorials and other things but today we're going to talk about kids and ai and education and if you are a teacher or if you are someone who has kids or work with kids or a part of a family, which a lot of you are probably, <laughs> then this might be of interest to you. So today's guest, um, and I'm gonna in a minute um, check the chat to make sure this is actually working. So I apologize if you can't hear me or something is going wrong. I actually don't know about it, but I will look in a minute. Um, <laughs> but everything looks okay. Okay, so today's guest is Stefania Druga. Um, she is a recent alum of the MIT Media Lab. She is from Transylvania. Uh, and she has created a project called Cognimates, which is an open source platform for ed AI education. So I could say so much more, because there's so much more to say uh, about Stefania and her background, but I would rather she present that to you. Um, and uh, the, it, you can always, of course, check this video's description, which there's not a lot there right now, but after this live stream ends, we'll add more links and bio. But there is, I think, a link at least to Stefania's website. Um, and uh, a tweet about the Cognimates project from, uh, from MIT in the description right now that you can click on. So uh, what's happening? This is like one of my regular live streams, and we're just gonna be here for an hour or so. Um, Stefania will show a variety of different things. We might have to take a break to figure out some technical thing. It will be informal. I will be monitoring the chat. So if you have questions, you can ask them in the chat. And then sort of uh, when we're done, um, this will be an archive that will in theory live forever, how long YouTube lives for <laughs> on the internet that you can watch. And there also might be, so we might we may try to like pull out some of the um, uh, tutorial portions of today into separate videos that we can upload either on the coding train or on a different platform that uh, Stefania would choose. Okay, so I think that's all I have to say. Did I forget anything? So I'm just going to bring Hi. Stefania here. Here she is. I'm going to go and monitor the chat. If there's a really important question, I, you can ask it. I'll interrupt. Otherwise, I'll mostly like keep track of questions for the end. Awesome. Okay, Thank great. You. I'm going to awkwardly slide over here. Yes, it's all good. <laughs> and then Hi. I'm going to come over here. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. I'm actually amazed because Dan pronounced my name correctly, which never happens. Uh, I'm Stefania, nice to meet you all. Um, I am just graduated from MIT Media Lab and uh, during two years there, I've been working on this project called Cognimates, which is like a playmate and a learning mate. Um, and the goal of this platform, which is open source by the way, is to teach AI to kids and allow kids to customize, train um, their own AI models and teach like program smart devices they have in the home and learn more about this technology. So the overall mission and goal of this project is really to democratize like who gets to create with AI. And you're gonna ask me, why are you doing this? And it, it's kind of crazy to teach AI is complicated, machine learning is complicated, why should we teach it to kids? And I'm going to say that it is necessary because for the first time we have a generation that is growing up with this technology, just like I grew up with internet in my small town in Transylvania. And we have more than 47 million smart devices in homes right now that kids are talking to. And when I started my, my work at Emma Media Lab, we did a lot of research to actually understand how do kids perceive these devices? Do they trust them? Do they want to learn from them? Do um, they want to program them. And we published a lot of this research and then we figured out that actually a lot of the kids um, thought these devices like Alexa or, I don't know, uh, Google Home are more intelligent than they are. So we were like, what if we give them tools to actually show them how they work? And in that process, they would learn how to demystify a little bit what artificial intelligence means and how smart are really these smart toys. So we built this platform, Cognimates, which is available online, that's the link, cognimates.me. It's a 
research projects. Some of the things I discovered while preparing the demo today don't work, but some of the things do work and it's open source so you can help me fix it. Um, it has, it's building on Scratch, which was developed at MIT Media Lab as well, and it's open source, but we created an entire series of extensions specifically for AI education. So when you load, uh, when you go to Cognimates, uh, the Cognimates.me, you're going to see this website. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Um, and then if you actually want to start programming straight away and trying it, you can click on this launch Cognimates which will take you to the code lab. And in the code lab, um, on this plus button, you can kind of see what are some of the extensions we created. So anything from programming your Alexa, if you have one at home, to actually play with um, the camera your computer or tablet has to do color detection, or just you know program a robot like Cosmo if you have one. Um, we wanted to provide extensions that are a lot of fun for kids and usually kids love Lego and we can do like, uh, like Lego we do as well. Um, but it, we also wanted to allow kids that don't have access to an Alexa or a Cosmo or a Jibo to be able to learn these skills as well. So some of these extensions are just like web based and others are also like for IoT and robotic platforms. Um, so before talking too much about this, I can show you what are some of the things that we could do. And um, on our website, we have a collection of projects. Um, I'm going to start with the first one, which is like uh, called Make Me Happy. Uh, and in this project, if you click on, on it, you can download it, download the starter project, and then go to the code lab and upload it file upload and then let's see where did I put it and in here you will see what are like all the elements of this platform which as I mentioned is building on scratch so on the left side you see what are all the blocks that we can use oh yeah I forgot to say that uh, <laughs> um, we, the, the way we do coding and the way this platform works is by using this like blocks, um, which is like a visual programming language it's called. And it all builds on a Blockly open source grammar from Google. And it's very similar to Lego. So just the way we plug and play with Lego, we can plug and play with this blocks. So the idea for the blocks is that you don't necessarily need to know how uh, the syntax of a um, programming language like JavaScript or Python, but you can just read what's on the text of the block and start to create your program in here. This is called like the stage um, uh, in, in the middle. And then uh, you can start to put them together and when they, it's actually very satisfying. Um, when you put two blocks together, you get a sound. I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, you get that beep. Um, so, on my left side, I have all these different blocks. Let me see if I can zoom to show you. Uh, yeah, I, I have like a library of different blocks that allow me to control my program. In the middle, I'm like the movie director. I put these blocks together and I can start to create a story or a game or an animation. And on the right side, uh, I have this output where right now you can see me and a character. I, um, I don't know why that's the case, but we'll figure it out. I think we added too many extensions. Um, so right now, what we're going to do is basically go through the steps of this project. And I'm going to show it to you just the way I do it with kids. So we have this character, which is Nari. And um, Nari is going to react to messages we're telling it. So if we're telling uh, Nari, like we're gonna start with something very, very simple. So Dan, what should we tell Dan, Nari to make her happy? Like, give me a phrase. Uh, hold on, I'm, to turn my, I'm turning my mic back on. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious, by the way, if, if my mic is causing sound problems, because there, there was a few people saying there were sound issues in the beginning, and then uh, as soon as I moved my mic, that went away. Okay, so I'm trying to okay. come up with a phrase yep. to make the character happy. Yeah. Um, would you like something to eat? Okay. <laughs> would you like something to eat? So 
right now we're going to go when we click the green stop the green flag we're going to have Nari be thinking because she doesn't really know what we're going to say yes uh, first and then we have a block where she's asking us to tell her something and my answer i'm typing here is <laughs> going to be would you like something to eat it's very thoughtful I guess I with a question. yeah no it's very thoughtful we could do it like a, an entire chatbot and then let's see what happens when i click enter she should be happy and she is happy uh, also if you want to have just the interaction we can make this bigger and um and do it again but you know this kind of program only works if we say that specific phrase right would you like something mm -hmm. to eat oh, uh, the, the chat is pointing out a typo it says go eat your it instead of oh yes <laughs> thank you eat i ate the letters because <laughs> 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 i would like some letters to eat um yeah so this is like uh, very limited in terms of like how much we can interact with Nari. What if we want to tell her all sorts of different things and make her react happy based on that? So for, for that, we actually made this other extension called feelings. We used to call it sentiment, and then we realized that kids don't know what sentiment is, but they know what feelings are. So that was interesting. So we uh, have this feeling extension, and in here, there is a block uh, that it's saying, what is the feeling of the text? So in here, I could just try it out. Let's see how this block works. So if I would copy paste the, the example we just had in here, uh, do we, what do we think? Do we think this is gonna be positive or negative or neutral? What do people in the chat think? What, so the, 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 would you like something to eat? Is, is that, that positive or negative? Is that positive or negative or neutral? It's, you should know it takes the chat about 30 seconds to catch up with us. Oh, uh, okay. Because of the delay. Yeah. But we can, you can keep going and I can report back. What okay, okay. So <laughs> usually like when I add a new block and I don't know what it does, like I can just try it out. So in this case, I'm going to try with a different phrase. So I know, for example, that if I put awesome, that should be positive. So let me see if that works. And yeah, that says it's positive. And if I say not great let's see what happens then negative um, but if i say most people are saying positive now positive so a couple neutrals only one negative have i seen okay it looks like I'm, this is not a scientific poll but it looks like the most common such thing is positive okay there actually is a way to do a real-time poll with the um, on youtube with the community tab but it's not part of the live stream Next time. Okay, so let's try it. Do you have a Do you have a guess? Do you think it's positive, negative, or neutral? Uh, I'm gonna guess neutral. Neutral. I'm gonna guess neutral. True, but let's see. It's positive. Oh my god. That means our library doesn't work very well. <laughs> no, but it is like this is the, what we do with kids. It's like, what do you think made it positive? Like, what word, and how can we probe that? Right. So. We see now that this block can actually pick up like sentiment of phrases we're typing or saying. So in my program going back, if I want Nari to react to all sorts of things, all sorts of messages I'm gonna give her, we can just go in here and instead of saying, I want to see if the answer is a specific phrase, I'm just going to always check what's the feeling of the different answers we're, we're getting and if that feeling is positive, then I'm gonna make Nari happy. And if it's negative, I'm gonna make her sad. And you know, this kind of conditional, like all of these blocks we're using here, it's already a bit complicated. So sometimes when I start with kids, I don't even start with this. I just, we have this block that is called a hat. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that all of these blocks have names based on their functionality. So this conditional I just used, this is called pants because it has like, you know, it looks like pants. And then this other block here, it's called a hat because that can trigger like an entire action. So I could do this in many different ways, like everything with code, we can do it in many different ways. So I could be, when text is positive, just make Nary happy. And when text is negative, make Nary sad. Or I could do it like with a conditional. And the other cool thing with these blocks is that it's very, very fast to 
to remix. So I can just duplicate that entire collection of blocks. Let me just make it a bit smaller so you can see. So like this, I can make Nary react when it's positive. Uh, oh, I already have one else, but I could also like right now, we're only dealing with positive and negative. We don't have anything with neutral. So in that case, uh, we can say if the answer is neutral, then Nary should say something like, oh, I'm still thinking, or we, we would make her still be thinking. And I don't need an else here. I can just do a simple if. Um, I'm improvising, guys. Yes. I have a quick. I have a question because yes. a lot of people are asking this in the chat, so I thought it'd be yeah. worth clarifying. Yeah. Because I'm seeing a lot of comments like, "Oh, this looks just like Scratch," or "Is this built off of Scratch?" It's so built can on you top can of you Scratch. explain the, and so can you explain the relationship between this and Scratch? And is this kind of like then, uh, if I was a Scratch user, I could bring this in as a library, basically, or mm -hmm. how does that work? Yeah, so uh, Scratch is working right now on Scratch 3.0, which is um, using Node.js, and it's uh, working on mobile, any browser, and the code is open source, it's on GitHub. So we build on that code because a lot of the kids are very familiar with Scratch blocks and they recognize it straight away and they know how to play with it. But then we build on top of it and created all of these different extensions. Um, unfortunately, right now you cannot add these extensions on the Scratch website. You can only use them on the Cockney Mates website. But hopefully in the future, um, they will be added on the Scratch li library of extensions as well. Um, if you are familiar with Scratch and Scratch extensions, I actually published a few extensions on the previous version of Scratch. So if you go to scratchx.org, these are the old school extensions. And you can see in here some of the extensions we've done for AI, like the Clarify, which does image recognition. And then there was another one for a robot and micro bit and so on. The tricky thing with this is that it, it requires flash, so it only works on a desktop. And with the new 3.0 Scratch, which I believe it's coming out in officially in January, but it's in beta, you can also try it online. Um, then you already have this new Node.js implementation and this new kind of library of blocks. Um, I don't know if that was a simple enough answer, but the short answer is we are building on top of Scratch. You can't import these uh, extensions yet in Scratch, but you can use them in Cockney Mates for now. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So let's go back to our program and see if this works. Um, so we'll start from the beginning, click the green flag, and we can say to Nary anything. So do you, you want to give me a positive or negative or neutral? Um, all aboard. All aboard. I didn't actually unmute my microphone to say that. <laughs> well, they probably can hear me through your microphone, but all aboard is what I said. OK, so let's see how she reacts. and I don't know what happened. Tell me something all aboard. I wonder if we have... So she should be uh, either happy or sad or neutral. Come on, Mary. Work with us. Okay, so let's try it here. It's neutral. Oh, I see. Oh yeah, she does what we told her to do, of course. Uh, <laughs> Debugging, by the way, is the, the uh, primary activity of uh, oh. live streams on the coding train. So. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we said if the feeling is neutral, she's gonna be thinking, and that's what she's doing. So let's actually add something there so we know that this is neutral. Uh, we could make her say something, or we could make her play a sound. Um, Let's make her play a pop if it's neutral. So let's try again. All aboard. 
and then that should be yeah. So that was neutral, and now I want to try like something positive. Uh, the coding train is fun. And let's see. Yay! And she's happy. So um, <laughs> with all of these things, I just wanted to show like a very quick, simple example. But as you can see, it's much more fun if we do it together. So because I want you guys to give messages to Nary, what we're going to do now, and this is like where the modularity of extensions and doing this inter-platform, like uh, connecting everything uh, makes a lot of sense and it allows us to play with many different parts of the web and the physical world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add another extension. So uh, instead of me giving Nary examples, I'm going to ask you guys to do that. So for that, we're going to use another extension we, we built, which is the Twitter extension. So instead of me typing here and doing typos, <laughs> I'm going to let you do typos. Now, um, if you tweet to the coding train, train, uh, we're going to analyze the feelings of your tweet and based on that, make Nary react. So I'm just going to add it in here. So instead of asking a a question. We're just going to put the tweets you guys are sending and actually because we want to see what the tweets are, I'm also going to make her say the tweets so we see them on the, sc on the screen. And let me find the say block. Da -da -da. Alrighty. So First, she's gonna tell you to tell you tell her something, and then she's gonna show what you guys are tweeting. So I hope people are gonna start tweeting with the coding train. Um, and yeah, let's give so it a try. So to be clear, they should tweet at the coding train or just the hashtag coding. Train? Uh, we could do both. Both, okay. Uh, but for now, I did it with the hash okay. with the. I, I'll do one for at least. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I did one with at the coding train. Okay. okay. Uh, we can also do a hashtag Cognimates afterwards, uh, or the coding train. Okay, I, okay. Sen I sent one. If people again, like people won't. Uh, they'll be. They're about thirty seconds behind. So stuff. Okay, so let's yeah. try it. And I'm live streaming. Come watch. And how is she reacting to that? Oh yeah, she, it was neutral, so she played a sound. Let me make her say, uh, that's, so we should, we can give her a personality. So if it's neutral, she can say, okay, I like that. <laughs> uh, and then if it, she's happy, she can say, that's awesome. And, if it's sad, it's like, oh no, um, tell me something else. All right. So it's going to be the same tweet. I can also try to tweet here. Hopefully someone else Okay, has tweeted. Okay, I like that. So this is the neutral one. Let me tweet from here. Uh, There's a few that came in. Oh, there there are. Okay, let's try it. All in the last all in the last one minute. All right. So let's see. Get the latest tweet from the coding train. Oh yeah, I'm still getting. I'm live streaming. Maybe it's like a little bit of a lag. Oh, is it getting the? Is it getting the tweets that the from the coding train and not people at mentioning the coding train? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it should be people mentioning it, but coding train. Because that's the that's the last tweet from the coding train, which is I'm live streaming. Okay, we can test that very quickly, at the coding train. Um, this. Great. 
and then go back here. Yeah, I, th I think it's only getting the ones from the coding training. So let's do the hashtag, that's my bad. Um, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you can um, use the same tweet you had, but use a hashtag instead of at. Uh, so we're going to try that instead. And oh yeah, this, this works. So actually, if I just change the at with the hashtag, uh, it should be seeing the tweets that you guys have sent. So let's give it a try. Tell me something. Ooh, do you guys see what happened? It was so fast that we couldn't see it. So we need to add a wait time so we can actually read what you guys have tweeted. Let's see. And Live coding is hard. I, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> 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 okay. The coding train up. Oh, wait. We'll put more weight because one second is not enough to read it. Let's do two seconds. It's good not to have it on for too long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so far, I'm watching. Everything is, uh, uh, it's is okay. fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's, let's try it's it again. It's a pretty nice audience in general. Tell me something. TGIF, think, oh, she likes that. She's happy. <laughs> okay, we, are we getting a new one? Let's see. It's the same one. Uh, okay, I'll try one last one. Let's try with a negative one, just to see if it works. So. Tasteful Toasty tweeted, I have very mixed feelings, so hopefully that would be neutral. Oh, yeah, let's see if we get it. That would actually be a, a very interesting example. True, true, true. Cockney Mage rocks. <laughs> I like that. People are too nice. We only have positive examples. Um, thank you for playing along. So this is kind of like how it works. Like, you saw we started like with, I don't know, five blocks and then like initially just kind of give an example and make the character react to a specific phrase we, we said, like, what would you like to eat? And then we wanted to create a more natural like interaction, like talk to Nary the way you would talk with a friend. So for that, we use the feelings extension so it can analyze the feelings of different messages that we would send. And then we added the extension, which makes it social, like the Twitter extension, allowing all of us to play this game together and you can imagine like doing this with kids is much more fun than trying to deal with the lag and um, all the other complications of life coding. But the idea is that it opens up a world of possibilities. And you saw right now only a character on the screen reacting, but when we have also like a Lego robot reacting to what we're saying um, or a Cosmo robot or uh, things that are in the physical, like a micro bit showing a heart, um, you can imagine that the world becomes a playground and all of these things can be combined in many different ways. Now, from an AI perspective or you know, a customization perspective, if we play with this a little bit longer, you're quickly going to see what are the limitations of this like, feelings extension. And then we're going to start to think, okay, who trained this extension? What kind of examples did they use? Why does it pick up, why doesn't it pick up sarcasm? Or why doesn't it pick up you know, more like backhanded compliments and things like that. So that comes like a natural com transition and question for kids as they're playing along and poking with these things. So we build like also on the Cockney Mage website, you're going to see this link for Teach AI. And if you click on it, it's going to, it died. Oh, wow. This is that was so slow. No, it's good. Um, so, <laughs> so um, basically once they tried existing AI models. It could be for vision or for text or for many other things. Then they can start to teach their own. And maybe, you know, a child would want Nary to laugh at his jokes or like get like a very specific 
uh, insider uh, you know, message that he's sending. So he can go to the TJI page over here, and this is building on top of IBM Watson, and it allows kids to create. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Oh, you did already. Uh, I did. You did. I'm, f I'm looking at it here, which is behind. Yes. Time. You're fine. Uh, no problem. So yeah, the CockyMate Studio uh, builds on top of IBM Watson, and it allows kids to create their custom classifiers. So if they don't want to use a uh, already pre-trained model uh, that exists online, they can make their own with their own examples. So in here, we could do this make me happy project and start to add examples. It's like, what kind of text I would like Nary to recognize as happy? And what kind of text I would like Nary to recognize as sad? Or maybe I want to add another category where it's not neither happy or sad or neutral. It's more like, um, I don't know, weird messages, right? Um, I like weird stuff, so. <laughs> so we can kind of give much more nuance to, instead of black and white and like cats and dogs, or we can start to add our own examples. And then once we have five examples for uh, each of these categories, click on the Teach Me button. This will create a classifier then that we can use afterwards in our CockyMates game by adding this text extension. So it's, it's all like coming from like, okay, let's do the fastest thing that we could do so we can have a game or an interaction that is fun. And then like peel off the layers and start to understand what are some of the things, like how can I influence how this works and how would I like to customize it and what would I like to create? I had an example with vision as well, but um, I don't know how many more. I, I'll, I'll try to show it quickly. Uh, that one is using color tracking, and um, we have one that is drawing and one that is playing a game. I don't know which one I should show. Uh, drawing or s like... Uh, you might, now that you mentioned it, you might have to show both. Okay, <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> okay. people will want to see the other one now. That's true, <laughs> okay. So save the falling. Again, you guys can try this at home. They're on the website. Um, and this one, uh, what it does is that it's using the color tracking extension, which allows us to basically pick any color we want to track. So what's happening here is that if I start the game, you're gonna see like these guys are like falling. We have, it's from that expression of it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> it's quite literal. And um, I'm tracking the color red. So technically when I'm showing red, I can start saving them, so they shouldn't be falling anymore. Um, let's see. And I tested it before it was working. So it's not saving them, so that means I need to change my red that I'm tracking, so it's probably a little bit darker. Um, and if I want to have like a precise color picking, we're going to make the video not be transparent so we can actually see the full color. And then we can actually go in the video stream and pick the color that we want to track. So if I click in here, I have this color picker. So I can say track this kind of red. So normally, hopefully, yep, and now I'm saving them. So if I'm not showing that red, they're falling and it's sad. And then when I'm showing the color, they're like float, going back. So um, yeah, that's kind of like save the falling, how the save the falling game works. And then you could do it like also with ping pong or uh, multiple colors like, uh, or multiple objects. Um, and maybe you wanna do something like, oh, when I'm wearing this color, I want music or things in my house to start in a specific way. Um, so we did a project um, I will show it to you here very quickly, where I keep on talking about physical things which I couldn't bring with me today to show, hopefully in future demos. But this is what it looks like when, instead of having only things happening on the screen, uh, you have things happening in the real world. So this is a project where an entire room is reacting to had a terrible nightmare. how you describe your dreams. Is the audio okay? Okay. I had a dream that I was in a magical forest. 
get the bubble machines and beautiful colors and like beautiful music. So she is just describing what kind of dreams she had. Those get analyzed with the feeling extension and then things start reacting to it. Um, but if we don't want to talk and we're just wearing a specific color, things can react to that as well. Um, yeah, this is showing how we can program Alexa. And let me quickly go back to the other one with the drawing. Let's see if I have it. Uh, color drawing. Many things are gonna change also. Like you see right now, I'm like uploading and downloading. In the future, we're gonna have a link where you just click on it and it would load the project automatically. Uh, this is tracking green, which is all behind me. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so when the extension sh sees the color that we're tracking, this little uh, guy will start drawing. So let's go back to our red over here. And we're gonna try it. And then start the project. So he's just floating around not drawing and if I show him red, he's gonna start drawing on the screen. Um, and we can make him play music as well, or I don't know, maybe just only draw with the color that he's sensing and things like that. So I just wanted to show two examples of like how we could play with vision and with text um, and create interactive projects. Because I think like the biggest thing, like if we talk about what do kids do after scratch, right? Or after coding, if you have an Alexa at home or if you use Siri or um, it's a very different paradigm I think for for everyone and especially for kids is you start to understand that it's coding is not just a set of instructions that you're sending to this uh, devices um, you start to understand that especially with AI and machine learning in the in the loop you have more of a conversation so the more you talk to Alexa the better it should become at recognizing what you're saying or picking up your accent or personalizing the answers. And I think in the future, like the reason it is important to teach this to young people is because they need to understand this fundamental paradigm shift of going from just sending a set of instructions like making a recipe for a pie to actually understanding how feedback loop works. What if like for Nari to make Nari happy, we made this game, right? And I keep on giving her examples, but then Dan starts giving other examples because what makes Dan happy and what makes me happy might be different. Um, how do we negotiate that, right? And how do we become more aware of what we share and where and how is that being used? Um, so I think these are all part of the underlying concepts and goals of trying to provide these playful tools um, that would allow kids to get a better understanding of how these technologies work. And um, yeah, and that's what we're trying to do with Cognates. And um, there's lots of resources. I actually just published a blog post about the project as well. And um, you can hear, maybe we'll, we'll uh, I don't know if you have any questions, but um, I wanted to quickly show how kids explain it because I think they do a much better job than I do. Um, so here's what AI looks like for a seven-year-old. Um, let's see, I'm gonna skip through the part of the pro pro video where I'm talking. Um, over here, this is on YouTube, it's called Kids Teach AI A Little Humanity with Cognimates. And let's see what they have to say about it. Who decides how it's applied to benefit society? We show children how a robot sees the world. How does it learn to recognize objects? How does it know to recognize words? Are you a potato? We also allow them to be able to teach a robot or a computer. I'm gonna give you 10 examples of images and then you're gonna learn what a gesture is. So every interaction you have with it, it's kind of like a conversation. So you're having this learning companion, this cognimate that is learning with you and teaching you at the same time. So we were programming robots. You could play rock, paper, scissors. Okay. You did rock, paper, scissors into the camera 
and on shoot you did one of the motions and the camera did one of the motions and it's like rock, paper, scissors, shoot. The computer gets like better as you play the game. Cause like us, we might not know everything at first, but if we keep trying, we get better. Everyone has heard about like machine-based learning or artificial intelligence. And there was a certain no questions asked for a lot of the more tech savvy parents. It was like, go for it. Technology is gonna be a huge part of their lives, much more so than my life. If it's scary for some people, this AI technology, I totally get it. But as a parent and as a teacher, I thought it was really important because these are skills that 21st century kids need to have. When they understand this idea of a feedback loop, that the more information you give to a machine or a robot, the better it becomes. Hey, Jibo, how smart are you? It really allows them to understand how machine learning and AI is different than just coding. So I think this is a very powerful paradigm for children. So they understand that when they have an Alexa at home or a smart assistant, everything they do, the way they talk to it, gets fed into the algorithm so the machine is actually reacting to them. Right now, we don't have basic AI literacy. We don't know what K-12 AI education should look like. So we have the opportunity to really shape that. At the Media Lab, we believe that should be done in a hands-on way. Children should work as part of groups and community. They should be able to share ideas, and they should feel empowered by tools that allow them to build real projects that matter to them. When my dad was young, he bought a car and took it apart to see how it worked. So you teach people that young how these things that grown-ups mostly program, how it works. Yeah, so basically AI for kids is like the cars of their generation. And if a seven-year-old can see that, hopefully, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can all do uh, see that. Um, I will stop here with the demo. Yeah, I do have some questions, so I can yeah. I'll come slide around the other yeah. side of you. Um, actually, so I'm curious, that, that to me that quote is so kind of amazing and so mm -hmm. wise of this seven-year-old sort of like think of, is right. that, that just came right from, that, that boy just sort of thought of that? In, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we asked them, um, like, why do you think, so I should mention that that video was made a month after doing workshops uh -huh. in the school. Right. So it wasn't like they just did it. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was like they actually, what they remembered after one month right. when we went back, and the Jimmy uh, who did the video with me, from, who's the videographer from Media Lab, was like, why do you think you're doing this? Like, why, did, why does it matter? Mm -hmm. And he came back to us with that quote about cars, like how his dad took apart a car yeah. and that it surprised him mm. that yeah. we teach people so young how these technologies work, right? And for me, that was so profound right. because I think a lot of times we kind of like, because we are product of a system of education, yeah. we kind of limit what a child could learn at a specific age. Right. When in actuality, we see right. it, like you see it with your kids, and I see it with yeah. all the kids that I'm working. It's like, they learn so yeah. fast. It's such an interesting problem, too, because with a car, it's a physical thing. Taking mm -hmm. it apart means physically manipulating the metal, the wires, the pieces. Mm -hmm. And a computer, you could say the same thing. Oh, learn how an Arduino works, or a microcontroller. Learn mm -hmm. to light up an LED is, in a way, that aspect. But with a machine learning algorithm, you know, what does taking it apart mean? You know, ultimately, yeah. if you look, if you think about like a neural network right. and you look at uh, taking that apart, well, it's just a whole bunch of numbers and how do you unpack, you know, well, and I think in many ways, mm -hmm. maybe what it is, is taking it apart is like looking at the data right. and kind of understanding what the data is and, and watching it break, I think, oh is the God. only way to understand, is a, is, a, is a way to unlock how <laughs> why how it works or why it works because when it ju when it just works then it feels like magic you take it for granted. when it breaks yeah. you can understand well, why did it break now i understand how it works a little bit um, absolutely and to quickly add on that um, yeah. i think you know when i showed uh, the teaching ai to google engineers they were like this is not they're not doing the model. They're just adding the data. They're right. not controlling the weights and how many right. layers. And I'm like, this is, and I'm like, you're right. Um, that's the next <laughs> level. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it is like a very good question. It's like what primitives and what right. do we tinker with? Right. And I would tell you that, especially for kids, like this idea of a cockney mate is much more profound that I have a character on screen or it's like you are, we are creating embodiments and stories that kids can relate to. And we saw that in the data because right. like, 
I've been doing research with 450 kids <laughs> and long term, like six weeks in schools and community yeah. centers. And, and when they talk about what they learn, it's like, yeah, it's like that project with the robot when you teach it to react like this and this is how it works. But they are creating this embodiment of what does it mean to learn how to recognize what's right. in a picture, right? right. And, and um, I I, I agree. I think it's like a really, it's a new question, an interesting question. You know, if you if you try to like sort of like a Google AI education, you know, the sort <laughs> of like seminal course might be like and Andrew Ang's Coursera right. machine learning course, right. where you're starting from, you know, linear regression. Exactly. And so what are other, and you know, that's amazing and fundamental yeah. and really meaningful and important, yeah. but is that the appropriate entry point for every context? Probably not. And so right. what are the other contexts? What are the kinds of reasons why and how and that people, that kids or adults might want to learn about machine learning. Mm -hmm. And so the one of the things that I love about this, especially and really relates to like mm -hmm. the program ITP where I teach is this kind of, I think the core mm -hmm. concept or values like learning through play. So play. And so, um, you know, how, and, and so, you know, and I think so like how, what kind of toys can you build? What kind mm -hmm. of like games can kids play? And I think that's like fundamental and really exciting about this work. And the confusion part, you know, I was very cool. So like I learned so much from doing this in schools. Like they always <laughs> do things that I never expect. So they would train a classifier with images and they were like, okay, we want to distinguish Kirby's, of course, that's very important, from dogs. It's like, <laughs> but now we want to confuse it. Can we find like a Kirby that looks like a dog or uh, can we put a dog with sunglasses? And yeah. like them going through this process of like, how can we confuse the AI and like having fun with it. And at yeah. the same time, like discovering like, what are the boundaries, right? Yeah. And what can this do and wh what can it not yeah. do? Or how do I teach it? Yeah. And uh, I think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I want to have provide more opportunities for kids to, because when right. we start to go and tell them like, have you guys heard about AI and self-driving cars? And the kid would say like, that's boring. Driving a car is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, we need to start from their right. interests and what right. they love. Right. Um, yeah. Cool. So I do have a bunch of questions. Yes. I might have missed, by the way, because I was listening yes. <laughs> intently, yes. might have missed some of your questions. If anybody is in the Slack channel, um, and there was an interesting question. You can also tag me, and I'll catch that more easily. But some of the questions I have um, is, and let me let me actually ask this one because I think it's a sort of key one. So, is there a specific? And this uh, comes from George Dow. Yeah. Um, is there? And I'm rephrasing the question, but mm -hmm. is there a specific? Um, target age that you're that, that cognates is designed for and kind of like what are the sort of limits of that like I mean I could imagine like you know me I could play with it I would have fun I'm 45 yeah. but right. you know what it, what was your sort of target audience there and what has been successful with different ages that you found yeah so I should say my thesis and all the research is online um, and we could put links in the oh description we're gonna put links in the yeah. descriptions and we published a lot of papers um, it is for kids of six and a half to 14 um, but we are expanding that, so creating a bit more advanced features for high schoolers um, and a bit more simplified features for younger kids. <laughs> but right now, like the core of the research was with kids in that age group and uh, their parents and teachers as well. Right. So we did a lot of teacher training and we did workshops where we would invite the parents as well because it's so important. Uh, we realized, I should, I should mention, this was like one of the things that surprised me the most, like in these workshops, Oh yeah, and I put some drawings of how very young kids describe mm. Alexa and AI. <laughs> it's like Dora the Explorer, and the <laughs> dots connect what the uh -huh. Alexa hears. That's awesome. Um, I think Alexa records sounds <laughs> and coded what happens. Um, but yeah, we basically videotaped everything that kids were doing. Like um, we wanted to go past this novelty effect because if you go to a child with a construction kit or a robot or of course, you know, they're amazed and everything is like the wow effect in the beginning. But if we go to schools actually like three or four times per week for six weeks, then we can really start mm -hmm. to see what happens when the novelty of technology wears off. How much can we engage these kids and how far are they going to go? Because a measure of success for me in terms of learning is not only that they know what um, model is or how you know sentiment analysis works or how computer vision works but it's also like a diversity of projects that they would create and how they use this like tools and concepts to actually build the world around them so we're like a measure of success is not only like oh i have the definition of this mm -hmm. it's more like 
are they building like very different projects? Are they tinkering with this? Are they playing yeah. with this? Are they, you know, breaking this? <laughs> uh, so uh, going to schools, we videotaped everything that kids were doing. And then we coded, we did like logistical regression. <laughs> uh, we coded to see what were the factors that mattered the most in them understanding these concepts and changing their perception right. to become a bit more skeptical mm -hmm. and more critical. And the number one factor that mattered most was collaboration. And it mm. was significantly uh, more uh, impactful than the time they would spend coding right. or the prior experience they had or it was like how much they would talk with their peers and like how they would like basically develop their ideas in like arguing or saying, no, I think it does this. Or like, I actually think mm -hmm. it's not like gonna remember you because, <laughs> you know. so it was fascinating that, and, and I do think it's so important to design for collaboration and for yeah. groups. And in that context, the conversation kids will have with their parents at home matter a lot. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, so I asked that question. Oh, another question, which is I guess it's sort of a quick one, maybe in yeah. a way, which is that um, does any of the stuff that you're working on with Cognomates is it uh, uh, does designed for mobile devices, smartphones, or is it all needs to be done from like the browser desktop? Um, so it can be used on a tablet. Uh, it's responsive, so and it's Node.js. It's in the browser right now. We don't have specific apps. Mm -hmm. Um, and we when you say it's Node.js, I'm just not, I'm just curious. Does that yeah. mean so um, the server is, is is running Node? So as the client is doing stuff, it's like sending the data to the server, then exactly. it gives the results back. And so that mm -hmm. sentiment analysis that it's doing mm -hmm. is actually happening on the server. Exactly. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting to think about the possibilities that you could also have it happen on the client now yes. with TensorFlow.js and some of the other stuff that working on here at ITP with the ML5 libraries. And so that's where we're yeah. going yeah. because one big limitation of the current implementation is that you need to have a Wi-Fi connection. Right. And in a lot of schools or in a lot of places that's not always available so we want kids to train their models with text or images but then be able to download them and use them locally um, so that's something I'm working on right now is like how do we hmm. use these models with TensorFlow Lite and other implementations yes. locally and for the mobile part uh, we're also uh, talking to App Inventor to port some of these extensions in the mm -hmm. App Inventor um, and if you have ideas, like all of our code is online. <laughs> right. Yeah, so actually somebody did ask, like, yeah. where is the GitHub repo? Maybe it's you could point people to search, the link. Search Cognimates on GitHub. It's the first result. Uh, <laughs> it's all there. I can also show it here. Do you have specific kinds of contributions that you're looking for, like missing pieces? Or are there like... Fix the bugs. Fix the bugs. <laughs> 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 Fix the bugs and then build new extensions because like um, <laughs> some of the cool stuff we've done more for art and creativity with style transfer. So we made an extension for style transfer for uh, images uh, and for audio. It's not published yet because it's very heavy on the back end. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like and it can be done now in the browser. So we have Anya Ning Shi who did a just recently a guest video all about that yes. with the ML5 so do library. That. So do, and do the training has to happen but separately, yes. but once you have the model, yeah. You can use it like, like, like yes. on the client. Yes. Yeah. So new extensions, like actually the simplest way, if you are a developer and you want to contribute is to go to the Cognimates VM. It's where all the meat is. We have the GUI, which is like the interface, but the VM is like where it all the- Might have to make that a little bigger for people to uh, see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so go. the link is- I'm totally standing in front of it, but- um, <laughs> Yeah, me too. Actually we can do, oh, oops. <laughs> How do I, yes, there you go. There um, go. So, if you go to GitHub, Media Lab, Cognimates VM, and then um, in here, all the extensions uh, are in their own dedicated folder. So if you start with the one that I showed you today, like the sentiment, it's basically one JavaScript file. Um, and each of the blocks is defined, like we define like what, the, uh, what type of block we're using, is it a hat or is it a reporter? Um, and then each of those blocks is basically calling a JavaScript function mm -hmm. that uh, in this particular case, I'm using this NPM, this node library called uh, sentiment here. And, oh yeah. and it's like uh, basically going to that library and saying like, look at this string. If 
uh, the feeling is positive return true and <laughs> in the feeling it's like very very like very simple so even with this extension maybe you want to add another block or maybe you want to change the language or maybe you want to actually play with the scores that we're using here right, right. and it's like oh you know that example you had that oh yeah the one with the food uh, would you like something to eat that wasn't neutral right it was right. positive like what can we do to, right. or maybe we actually allow the kids to play with the score, right? right? Um, so yeah, and if this, I'll, I'm just going to put the video back because people always c c complain when it's gone for too long. Okay. Not complain is the wrong word. They like to see. It's, it's very here. nice. We're here. Um, this is super interesting. I, like seeing this now, like peeling back the curtain, I realize that uh, the, uh, how uh, amazing this is in terms of. Readability? Re well, just if for somebody who ha is working on some machine learning algorithm to be able to have that running in JavaScript to be able to just suddenly have this other front end to it that a kid could access. And you know, one of the things, that, um, I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure if this is that's the node package I'm thinking of, but mm -hmm. the one that I've looked at quickly, mm -hmm. that, I th that it might be the same as using this, like that Athen 111 list, yes, yes. which is, a, if it's you aren't familiar, one. it's yeah. a big long list of words that, yeah. um, a group of researchers uh, decided gave uh, weights to positive and negative scores. And one of the things that I mm -hmm. have done with my students here yeah. is uh, uh, build a little example where you could change all those weights and add your mm. own words. And so that would be like, you know, with see me, and that could be yeah. a thing that you, that could that you know you could imagine the same way of the uh, that you're showing kids that they can do the image train an image classifier. Exactly. Does that? I'm um, uh, and so that I'm also wondering is the image classifier stuff is that also an example of what you're doing? It's like transfer learning. So mm -hmm. it's already starting with a pre-trained model that exactly. then you're transferring it on It is top transfer of. learning yeah. and the reason for that is um, time. Yes. So oh. <laughs> it, when you're working with kids, they're not going to have the patience to wait for an hour. Or right. Well, also you won't necessarily have the data set that's large enough to work set, with. Yeah. But it's still conceptually they're going to learn about all the the steps. vocabulary and the steps. And it, it's very uh, in line with like the Teachable Machines project exactly. from Google and the stuff that we're doing with ML5. So I, I didn't, I knew there were connections here, but there's but even the more. It's <laughs> even more. And, and it's yeah. also like, uh, going back to the mobile question, one of the things that I'm thinking a lot about now is like, what are the experiences and play patterns and you know activities that kids could do with a mobile that they couldn't do with a laptop? Right. And we were talking about this. It's like your phone already has so many sensors. It's crazy. Uh, and we're, we have it with us in our pocket all the time. So it's like, what if I make a game where it's like tracking if I'm sitting too long in one place and it's gonna start like vibrating, but like I build that with blocks, right? Or if I'm teaching it, like I want you to recognize right. that this is my pattern of what I do when I go to ITP right. and then right. tweet this and whatever, yeah. or, or just with gestures. Kids love, like with microbit, it, has, it has an accelerometer. And they love to, again, this Papert was describing this as body synchronicity. And it's actually fascinating, like how complex, how much kids could solve complex problems if they can project it to their body. So if I need to like code an algorithm where I tell a robot to draw a square, if I pretend I'm the <laughs> robot and I think like, what do I need to do to draw the square? It's so logical and it's yeah. obvious. So how yeah. do we bring that experience to other concepts, right? Yeah. Um, that was a long, I yeah. talked too much. No, 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 you're <laughs> fine. Tr th this whole channel is me just talking too much. So <laughs> there's nobody else to say anything but us here. So um, there is another question which I did grab, um, which is a little bit off topic, but since mm -hmm. you're here and I know the MIT Media Lab is its own thing and MIT mm -hmm. is a huge university, but someone did ask, I'm interested in attending MIT as a fresh Freshman, I was wondering if you could ask her about time there. Any tips for someone? So, do you have any tips or thoughts about like the experience of going, you know, as a student from another country and coming to uh, MIT? What was your experience like? <laughs> you know, in in, uh, in a minute or two. Maybe this is too big of a question. But uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I'm really happy this someone asked this question. Yeah. That's why I wrote that blog post where I yeah. showed my journey because I think it's so good. Just as we demystify AI, to demystify what it means to go to a place like. Media Lab or NYU or, and I think a lot of the times I would look to the projects that were coming from there and I was like, oh my God, like I would never, you know, be able to work on this or get there. And seeing those people's pathways and demystifying that, it's been very helpful. So, oops. Well, we, we made it to an hour. We did. <laughs> um, 
What happens when that stops? It's just like uh, it's so. It's a long story. I can explain it to okay, you after because okay. I've talked about it incessantly on this okay. channel. And someday I'm going to fix it or get a different camera. But at this point, it's just like I'm so used to it being there. I, it's like a ritual. Right. <laughs> so long story short, um, I wrote a blog post about this and I'll share it. But I will. I will tell you that I think in my case, what really helped is that if you work on something that you're passionate about, um, you are going to do your best work. And then also be playful about it and be open about it. Like, and it starts very early. It actually starts extremely early. The reason I'm doing this with kids is because I realized, like, when I grew up in my small village in Pennsylvania, we didn't, I didn't have access to all these things. I had to learn it much later in life. I'm 32 now. And, you know, to get there, like, I had to go through so many filters, like, first, uh, generation to be able to study abroad and first generation get scholarship here work at night here like a, a lot of the things where it's like if you really enjoy what you're doing and you're playing with it and you're having fun um, then you are going to do it for a long time and you will eventually get where you want to get and I think if there's one thing that defines MIT for me is that all of the students and the people I met there are extremely passionate about what they do um, and they are driven by learning because you never stop learning. Like that's mm -hmm. the other thing that I think, especially in this day and age, we talk about kids, but it's actually everyone. Like we never stop learning. So I know this is very broad. <laughs> it's very <laughs> I'm happy to talk to you more. <laughs> it's a good answer. On Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, well, obviously we'll put this in the vi in the in the description once uh, later, and anybody watching this later will see it. But just because you mentioned the blog post a few times, can you point people to the URL yes, right now if yes. they're watching? And actually, I can paste it into the chat. So while you're pulling it up, I will also pull it up. Uh, yeah. So this was just published so if you google kids teach ai a little humanity it's on medium and i should have made a, a short link humanity. um it's no problem because i'm going to paste it into the chat right yeah now. so it's um, on medium here we go great yep um, and it's it's a bit long but um it says it only will take you 14 minutes to read i think uh, you can read for 14 minutes and if you manage to watch this video for an hour <laughs> you certainly can it has stories of an astronaut in there so <laughs> yeah, and uh, certainly one thing I'm really curious about next, so I, this was an interesting, it, not an experiment really, but this was a little bit different than the usual content in that I don't have an audience that I know of. There's a couple younger kids that I've heard from who do actually watch yeah. some of the tutorials I have, but most of the audience um, is uh, you know adults or high school or college or, um, or beyond. Um, so, but I'm kind of curious, are there any uh, parents out there with kids? Are there any teachers out there who are thinking about how to integrate technology in the classroom and topics like AI and how to discuss those things? And so definitely get in touch, leave a comment or on Twitter if you're thinking about using Cognimates or if you're an open source enthusiast, which I know a lot of you are and are interested in contributing, you could certainly leave a comment or get in touch. I mean, I think it will make sense. We'll sort of like look at this after because, uh, you know, an hour is a nice round number for a video from we probably could could yeah. like get all this material, but we'll see if it makes sense to um, kind break of also just break it out like some of the, the yeah. code examples you're short, uh, you showed as like a short tutorial that could be yeah. a standalone video as well. So anybody has any feedback or suggestions about that? I will hear from uh, Mathieu who does video editing for the coding train. He's not able to watch live today, but he'll, he'll watch it later and I'll, I used to get good, really good feedback from him, so. Thank you for <laughs> having me and for this opportunity. Um, some things are broken, help us fix yeah. them and we're continuing to develop this, I think. You know, for me, it's like it's been quite a learning journey to let go and be like, this is not perfect, but we're building it together. So I look forward to see what you're going to be doing with Cognimates. And um, yeah, um, I also look forward to hear from your feedback. And uh, this is just the beginning. It's, it's fun. I, um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Um, and let's see. So I'm, this stream is going to uh, shut off when I press this button over here that turns it off. I actually have a little bit more time than maybe I thought I did. So I might come back in a little bit mm -hmm. for just like a short, I'll do some short coding thing, try to do that once a week. And then I will be back again next week with your <laughs> regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> this, is such a, this is a very strange life that I have now that I'm always in a room talking by myself to a camera. It's nice that you're here with me at least today. Okay, uh, so thank you for all of your questions. I'm really sorry if I missed anyone's question in the chat. Still learning how to figure out how to make all this stuff work. Um, and I will um, see you all soon. Goodbye. <laughs>
<laughs> I have to do that. And I said it wasn't a kids' channel. Wait, I have to find the place. This is the awkward thing. Are we this off is, now? No, we're not. This is actually okay. the. I have to, we're still on until I hit this button. <laughs> oh my god! And, it, and also, after I hit this button, it sometimes actually still streams like a okay, so about thirty <laughs> seconds. So okay. you have to. Now we're really leaving. Bye. Bye.